this is the Provoke Prawn, and this is a video to show you how to install the Crucial P3, including a setup process for installing it on your motherboard, and what you need to do in Windows in order to get it working, and some hints on things that you might encounter along the way with problems that it might cause installing the drive or other drives and the issues that it can cause with speed and other connectivity with your hard disk drives and SSDs, for example. So stick with me as I go through this setup process for this drive. Now, the good thing about NVMe drives are they are remarkably easy to install. There are no cables to worry about. They plug directly into your motherboard. There's no power cables or anything like that. You will see that there is a small screw included in the box, though, and you do need that screw. You may find that you already have some with your motherboard, but in some instances, you might not need the screw either. And I'm going to show you what I mean with a few different clips as we go through this video, so stick with me. This is a Z690 12th gen Intel motherboard setup, which means I'm not actually making the most of the PCIe Gen 4 setup here, because you could potentially use a Gen 4 drive and get faster speeds. But a 3,500 megabyte per second drive is still fantastic. Now, this has a number of different slots on the motherboard to make the setup process fairly straightforward. You can see there's one at the top, and we have two more NVMe slots at the bottom as well. This gives you the option to install in multiple positions and also potentially to install multiple drives. It is worth noting, however, that there may be differences in the speed depending on where you're mounting the drive and how many you're using. And I've done a video separately on what this means and why it can be a problem, because what you might find is if you're using the bottom drive on some motherboards, you actually aren't getting the maximum speed that you should be. So you might find that you're getting, say, 1,500 megabytes per second instead of 3,500 that you should be. So in reality, it's actually better to use the top slot wherever possible. The highest one closest to your CPU is usually the best and will give you the fastest speeds. I'll show you how to check later on, but you do have the option of installing in multiple places and as I said, potentially more than one drive. So you can see you can install three on this motherboard, for example. And you will notice that they also install upside down sometimes too, and depending on the slots. So they basically just slot into place with ease. Then you need to make sure that you're using the little thermal covers that are required over the top of the drives. And you'll find that there's some thermal putty or stickers that usually go in place underneath the heat shielding that will then help it to cool down. You can see there's some shielding here. This is an NZXT motherboard, a slightly different setup. And the reason I wanted to show you this is because you will have noticed when I was installing the Crucial P3 on the other motherboard, there was no screw required because there was a little notch that you can move around, a little plastic attachment that would actually hold it in place. With this NZXT motherboard, though, you do need to use that little screw that's included. So I'm just showing you here with a WD Black and a Samsung drive, how that works. So basically there's a standoff sticking out of the motherboard that you then need to screw the little screw into to hold the drive in place so it's nice and flat and that'll hold it in place and ensure it works properly. Now a quick note, you may want to check your motherboard manual because with some of these setups, you will find that if you're using a SATA drive, so for example, a 2.5 inch SSD or hard disk drive, and you're connecting it up with one of these cables to the motherboard as well, you may find that if you are using a M2 slot, so the NVMe slot closest to your CPU, or one of the other ones, or indeed all of them, that doing so may disable some of the data ports for hard disk drives and SSDs. And that will show up in your motherboard manual and let you know that usually there's a warning in there to say as much. So I check your motherboard software and manuals directly from the manufacturer to find out more because it may disable them. And it is worth knowing because you will need to use other ports. Usually if you're using M2 port one, you'll need to use data port two, for example, because otherwise port one won't work. So that's worth knowing as well. Now the setup process for when you get into Windows. So what you need to do is to activate the drive. In order to do this, click the start button and then search for disk. You'll see that there's an option there, create and format hard disk partitions. This works in Windows 10 and Windows 11. And I have alternatively shown options for doing this. So I'll link to it in the description on other crucial drives if this doesn't work for you. Once that's done, you will find that the disk management tool pops up and it will usually let you know immediately if the drive has been found. You can see disk two has been found here. If this doesn't work, you may need to go into your BIOS by resetting your machine and pressing delete and then looking for settings in there that will vary from motherboard to motherboard. But sometimes there are settings which is holding 
Windows back from finding the NVMe drive. But you can see here I've got two drives currently, a one terabyte Western digital drive as my main drive, and then a six terabyte hard drive as the secondary drive. So now I need to establish the third drive, which is the Crucial P3, as the next drive. And you can see now I've clicked OK. It's actually appearing here, but it's black, so it means it's not appearing in the Windows Explorer. So in order to do that, you need to assign it a volume. You can see me going through here, and I'm assigning it a letter. In this case, I'm going to make it letter E, and I'm also going to format it, and I'm going to give it a volume label. I'm going to call it Crucial P3, just for my own reference, so I know what it is. But you can call it whatever you want, what you're going to store in there, for example. You can see that I've got OneDrive named loads of videos. That's where I store all my footage. So you can do that and just name it whatever you want, games or whatever you're going to be using it for. And then once you've done that, you can see that the drive now appears in Windows and you can access it and move files to it and do all the other things. So fairly easy, simple, straightforward setup. The only problem you might have is BIOS settings, which are preventing this from loading. Sometimes there are settings in the BIOS that you'll need to tweak. The next thing I'd recommend doing is heading over to Crystal Disk Mark, which I'll leave a link to in the description, and download the Crystal Disk Mark Standard Edition software, which will then allow you to run a benchmark on your drive, which then lets you see whether it actually is running at the speeds that you want to. If you've paid good money for a PCIe drive, NVMe, and it's meant to give you a good fast speed, you want to make sure that it's working correctly. And this is one easy way to do it. This is a free software that you can run, and it basically just runs fake tests for transferring files between the drive. So you can see me selecting the drive E here once the software is running, and switching to the NVMe SSD mode, and then putting it on nine passes. It basically means you can make sure that the files are set so that it's actually running as much as possible on that drive on multiple passes to make sure that the data is legit. Also putting up to 64 gigabytes, basically we're going to be running through these several times with an aggressive sort of test to make sure that it is actually working as expected. And so you just press start on that and then let it run. What you will find almost immediately is if it is working correctly, you should see the speed start to populate in this window and it will let you know which speed it's currently running at with the read write speeds. Side note, you can also press control, shift and escape, open up the task manager and go to the performance tab and look for the drive under there and you'll see disk 2 E, isn't it? You can see that's under 100% load at the moment. And you'll also notice the read speed for it at the bottom, 3.4 gigabytes per second or thereabouts. It goes up and down, obviously, with the reading and writing of the drive. But you can see, basically, I'm getting the speeds that I expected, and that is good news. It's worth noting that uh, this isn't actually installed in the top slot at the moment, but I'm still getting the performance that I need to out of this. Again, this will vary from motherboard to motherboard, so be sure to check out the other video linked in the description about how speeds can differ, how to check, and why it happens, and hopefully you'll find that useful. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Hope you found this video useful with a good insight into how to set up your drive and test to make sure it's working as expected. Be sure to check out the other videos, links in the description that might be useful. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, hit that subscribe button to come back for more in future. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Hope you found this video useful, interesting, hilarious, or otherwise. Take a look at these other videos that I think you might find interesting as well. And have a look at the description for links and other information you might find useful. Click that join button to see the benefits of being a member of my YouTube channel. And most importantly, have a great life.